G'day viewers, well, turns out I was referring to these as normal base collector and emitter transistors, when really they're actually gate drain and source. <laughs> MOSFETs, I sort of thought so, yeah. maybe I sound like a dumbass, but anyway, live and learn. I've only got one replacement, 25 volt 3300 microfarad. These are 16 volt 3300 microfarad. I don't recommend using second hand caps, but just for test purposes, and if it works, then I may have to buy um, order some in. Well, I've got some 16 volt in there, 4700 microfarad. I don't know if you can put a 4700 microfarad in place of a 3300 microfarad in a circuit like this. I don't know if the two higher capacitance may um, have a bad impact. I'm not sure about that. So, so yeah, I have to get these sort of these caps and yeah. There they are. These sort of these caps and change them. I change one and we'll find another replacement from something else and see what happens. Okay, if yours well, I disconnected this last leak here on this MOSFET. This last leak here is actually disconnected, and the amp comes on. The little blue uh, blue power light comes on, but the amp doesn't turn on. So there's something. The power supply is working, but when that's connected, that last leak. It's short, so it must be somewhere here towards where it powers the amplifier up, but there must be a short further down the line. So I'll replace one capacitor. It's a 3300 microfarad 25 volts instead of the 16 volts that was in there, but that did seem to um, test alright, and so did this other one. That other green one tested alright too. It seemed to have held its charge alright. Yeah, didn't leak too badly, but I don't know. After, um, I don't know if you can, I've got a set of 4700 microfarads is the closest I got as near the new ones I got in stock. I don't know if, it, if I could, if 4700 microfarad would be um, a good replacement for something that's normally supposed to have 3300 microfarad. The capacitance might be too high for this circuit and they might stress other components, so I'm not sure about that. So I'll plug the power light back in, we'll see it come on. Now, get the camera under here. It's plugged in. And it can just see the power light there is on. With that last leg of that MOSFET disconnected, I just didn't solder it. We're still getting voltage here on those other ones. But that one there, I just disconnected that last leg on. So, must be somewhere further in here. I don't know if one of these little things here is shorted or what. That's just one of those little vector files, F10P20F. Yeah, that one is a negative one, that one is a positive one. I got some off a computer power supply for other replace them, but I don't think that's gonna be it might work anyway, because these are um, the opposite polarity. They go on the wrong way, them ones, so I can't use them ones. The polarity is the wrong way around. The first two legs are the um negative, and these ones here are the last two, so the polarity is wrong on them. It is working. Now if I disconnect it, flip it up, I'm supposed to let it sit for a minute before you touch the circuit bulb anyway. So I'll be careful here. That last leg, if I touch that somehow, it should start squealing if it's, um, but the circuit does get complete. Okay, we always will. Got a bad connection here. I got a bad connection here. This fuse holder is a bit corroded and I can't get a good connection. Right, if I solder that, 
I bet it will start hissing, but then the speakers come on, so the app does power up, but that's still under stress, so. If something goes here, and something connected here, I don't know, if whatever that is, it's shorted. That's just a jumper that goes there, and jumps there, and jumps there, and jumps there, to there, to there, to there, to there, to there. Then goes to the input. And there's a little, yeah, it's just a set of jumpers. And something goes here. So, I don't know what's going on there. So, yeah, I'll just disconnect it for a second. I'll solder that and see what it does. I bet it'll start squirting again, but... Touching it did nothing to complete the circuit, so I don't know what's going on. But the power light does come on and everything runs fine without the amplifier connected. It's just that last leg there that's shortened out. So the power, the rest of the power supply is fine, it's just something in this area here. that shortened that last leg out, but the amp runs with that under stress, so... Something in here is, this part of the circuit area here is shorted. I'm not too sure, so... I'll be able to trace the fault down to this part of the circuit somewhere, or it could even be here, I don't know. But yeah, getting there. Okay, viewers, I'm going to put this aside for now. I've got power supplies working, but I can't get any power to the amplifier now. I don't have any replacements for these bloody caps. It's too hard to find that size in my stock, so I'm going to have to um, just put it on a yeah, set of the side for now. Move on to something else for, for a while. Now, I made a video on these bloody ages ago. They're just my DC power supplies I made. Very, very, very crude ones. Just scrap stuff I've scrapped, kept the power transformers out of them. Because they are pretty useful. My word of advice, if you come across an old TV like this, pretty much getting thrown in the bin nowadays because of the digital switch over. These bigger TVs, they have the, um, the core, these big, they have the fridge core. This is just a three cord cord. If it has a cord like this, chances are a TV of this size has got a big power transformer. And this is um, a Mitsubishi AWA. AWA Thorn, made by Mitsubishi in 1973. I've done some videos on this already, but if you come across a TV quite similar to this, whatever you do, power transformer in here is very useful. You've got 12 volts and 112 volts. So what I would do, like a modern TV, you'll find a bridge rectifier like this. You can rectify that transformer with this, the 12 volt side. You can give you, you be able to build yourself a very heavy duty, um, yeah, heavy duty 12 volt power supply. Bridge rectifier on a transformer like what's in here. It's about half the size of this microwave oven transformer. It has two windings, 112 volt and 12 volt. But rectifying that for a 12 volt DC transformer, it's really, I think it'd probably be about 3 or 4 amps, a TV that size. That one here has one too, but it's a more modern one. It has a surface mount transformer. Well, also for these older ones, they have these bigger cords on them. Would be the tra transformers just bolted separately under the um, board of the TV. So yeah, keep these TVs, especially for the flybacks. These 70s era ones have got damn big flybacks in them. Keep the power transformers too, because they're just as important and can come very useful. If you can rectify that and make yourself a nice handy power supply with it. Especially the 112 volt side, you might make yourself a good run small 110 volt AC appliances with it. Something that's small, something that's yeah. You won't find much 110 volt AC appliances here in Australia, but little things you could blow up from voltages like that. So yeah, they're pretty useful. I've got some sort of some diodes here. I think these are probably pretty five or six amp diodes. From a power supply board of a reef projection TV. This came off a different power supply board from a reef projection TV. It had a slightly different setup. I've kept a couple of them. There's a CRT um, that's sitting on the big bit sitting there. It's a vintage 4K TV chassis sitting there. It's got a nice AC flyback right there. So, yeah, I'm going to keep that for a bigger transformer. I'm going to redo these little ones I made. I'm not really fussed about diode size, but I'm going to get the diode to this little one off this Fisher & Parkel VFD. you got some heaps of diodes here. you got four there, one there, five there, two there. So I'm going to be using diodes off this just to rectify that. 
gonna put it in yeah like that so um what do you call it yeah rectifier pattern so it's a bridge rectifier so straighten the pins out twist and sort of two lugs of solder AC in and DC out so you got your I should have drawn it up but you have your yeah yeah out yeah you see the schematic diagram for a bridge rectifier you can do the same with four diodes like this as long as they're all the same top, you just hook them up like that. I'm going to straighten the legs out because they're a bit physically too big to build up to something that, like this. This transformer came off this TV board. This is a German made um, transformer. Variable quality little thing. It's a Weiser. Weiser. The brand it is. It's like a traditional bolted together like an antique type transformer. Laminated and it's only got a small secondary. But um, it's only what I've rectified it half wave to, it's 9.2 volt. I shouldn't have measured the amps at the time, but I didn't know when I was making these much about them. So now that I've learnt more, I'm going to rectify it properly. It's just a good little test power supply for running little basic DC things, testing like testing that. I did with this one, using it to run this. That's for a vector file, it's plugging old battery call the short battery charger under that transformer. At the time I just snapped it all together quick. Now that I've got more time I'm going to assemble this properly into a proper DC power supply. Make a nice handy little bench unit. Just a crude full wave. Because this is just half wave. I've got two diodes here. It's only half wave. Not very practical. Alright, we always should have something that looks like that. They should all face one way, pointing one way that way, that way, that way, and that way. Seems to be working. So have those two dot on the outsides. Chance someone will tap into those two outside ones. And this one, and this one, with either positive or negative. I've run some wires to it to get to that chance for me. So yeah, a bit crude, but it works. Let's start wiring it up and see if she works. Okay, the always are very crude redneck DC PSU is nearly done. I'm just going to determine which is positive and which is negative and wire the colours up accordingly. Let's see if this is DC or not. If I've got the diodes the right way, which I'm pretty sure I have. But there's only one way to find out. Oops. I have to do this with one hand here. Alright, I'll do this. Try and set the camera up in front of the um, multimeter as I test. So it's trying to see how I'm going to test this damn thing. Not the best angle, but it's better. Alright, one there. Minus 5.9 volts. DC. Now go the other way. 5.9 volts. So that bottom one, that's positive and that's negative. So yeah, they're actually, um, I think they're Phillips diodes because a lot of the parts are the Phillips on that VFD or quality Japanese made components. Good quality stuff, got a 1.6 amp fuse, 4 amp fuse and all sorts of good quality stuff on that. So yeah, I'm going to wire the wires on and just hot glue it together. It's just going to be a crude test thing as I said. It doesn't have to be professional, it's only just a quick, um, yeah it's a quick slap together. Okay, if you want to wire the little wires accordingly. As I said it's pretty damn crude but so just a quick slap together. Very quick home brew, so let's see. Bloody wire, push this amp out of the way. Let's see what it sounds like on its output. It's humming, but if I put a footer cap on that, it should slow down and smooth out but yeah 
Oh, and the negatives on that side, if I put that there. I twist it together just very quickly here for a second just to show you. Okay, there. And I put the other cap the right way. Oh yeah, the filter capacitor works. Filters out. Let's see what it looks like on my multimeter. I mean, I don't have an oscilloscope. It's the next best thing you could use instead of an oscilloscope, so... Sounds the same when I plug a battery charger into that speaker, so... I'm assuming this is pretty much four-way rectified. Let's see what hertz I get reading out of it. Alright, hertz. Or frequency. Hundred hertz. Yeah, there's different ways of doing it, but so yeah. Thanks for watching.